friendly banking. I'm being attacked by my own phone. Correction, I'm being attacked by my bank, but they're doing it through my phone. They ring me up and then ask me to identify myself. I'm who you rang, I tell them. Yes, but how do we know that? Because you rang me. But what if it's not you? What if you're your son or your father? It's a chance you take, I tell them. How do I know, for example, that you're who you say you are? They want to know my date of birth and my mother's maiden name. At my age, I am likely to have forgotten both. And anyway, since they ring me every day to ask me, there's a better chance that they'll know than that I will. Dostoevsky, I say. I think my mother's maiden name was Dostoevsky. What's yours? The bank won't tell me its mother's maiden name. I have to trust the bank. Given that they've been taking my money for 40 years, know my phone number, know my voice, know my credit details, know how pissed off I always am when they ring, you'd think that by now they'd trust me. The trouble is they don't know it's me. It might be my father or my son who's pissed off. I might be impersonating myself. I might even be my own burglar. Actually, that's not right. It isn't me they say they don't know. They say it's my address. Yes, they write to me and ring me here, but that apparently isn't enough. They need further proof. Why do you need further proof, I ask them. Further proof against what? Terrorism. Government regulations post Osama bin Laden say that banks must ascertain for absolutely certain that people live where they say they live, otherwise they could be terrorists laundering money. If Osama bin Laden is himself having trouble managing his funds at present, that's the reason. They aren't sure where he resides. And when they ring him to ask his mother's maiden name, he puts the phone down, which I suppose they'd argue is proof their system's working. <laughs>